Hello, I'm Sogyal Zhang from the Hamam Church in Chinchun. I was a taxi driver, but the job was so difficult that I thought it was going to kill me. Then I met the risen Jesus and turned into a joyful, gospel-sharing driver. I like to give glory to God through my testimony. After military service, it was not easy for me to get a job with a liberal arts high school diploma. I had been a good student, so I became picky about what job I should get. That was why I could never stay in one job for long, and finally, I ended up driving a taxi. At first, I thought cab driving suited me very well, because I can earn money as much as I worked. What I liked about it the most was that I had a business all to myself without other people meddling with it. But through various circumstances, the job got harder and harder. My biggest problem was making deposits. If I didn't make enough money for the deposit to the cab company, I had to meet the quota with my own money. If I had a lot of fares, I had no problems with making the deposit. But there were too many cabs in the area I worked, and often I didn't have enough fares. Many times, I didn't know where to go because empty cabs were everywhere. When things are that slow, and all these taxis are waiting for the light at an intersection with their vacancy signs turned on, the drivers called that fireworks. In a case like that, it's best to just park somewhere a customer might show up and wait. One day, I was waiting for customers at a taxi stand in a college campus. A fare finally appeared, but a cab that had came later than me snatched him up before he got to the cab stand. I was so angry that I chased after that cab, blocked it, and yelled at the driver, Get out! I used to be a pretty tough guy back then. I won a lot of arm wrestling matches. <laughs> so I confidently grabbed the driver by the collar, but then the driver grabbed me too. <laughs> and he was incredibly strong. I knew I had picked the wrong fight. We practically traded blows and ended up hurting each other, and the customer left us for another cab. Being a cab driver involves dealing with people, but that was definitely not an easy task. Drunk customers gave me an especially hard time. They usually vomited in the car. Then they would keep changing their destination and end up not paying the fare. So I'd have to drive them to the police station. Going to the police station wasted a lot of time. So eventually, instead of going to the police, I would drop the customers off at a secluded spot far away and drive off. <laughs> I was a really evil cab driver. When you drive a cab, you are confined to a small space for a long period of time as you work. And to make more money, I skipped meals or had light ones as I drove. At night, I used to doze at the wheel from exhaustion. One time, I was so sleepy that I was barely aware of the road, and I drove right past my customer's destination until he said, Hey, mister! I jerked awake and my mouth was full of saliva. <laughs> so I swallowed it like that, and I thought that this job was going to end up killing me. It took me over an hour to drive back to the cab company as I fought sleep. It was normally a ten-minute drive. After driving the cab for a few years, I was totally exhausted. I sometimes heard that a cab driver died from overworking, and that sounded exactly like where I was headed. And I thought, that D in driver actually stands for death. My future always seemed unstable. I felt so hopeless that I didn't have the confidence to have children. I thought that the reason I had to live this way was because I had no inheritance or fancy educational background, and I wasn't smart or attractive. I blame my parents a lot. I also blame the social system, and I began to drink smoke, and seek pleasures of the world more and more. I quit driving the cab and came back to my hometown with my wife to help my parents with their restaurant. But I argued with my parents often because I blamed them in my heart. Then I had a huge argument with my father, and I ended up leaving my parents after less than a month. 
I had no idea how I should make a living with my wife, whom I loved very much. After doing various odd jobs, we came back to Chinchun, and I became a bus driver for a private academy. Then God found me. A co-worker who was also a bus driver at the academy was a man who lived with even worse circumstances than mine, but he always seemed happy. He could not talk well. He had a disabled leg, and he was older than me, but he was still single. He was even worse off than me, but he was so happy. I wondered, why is he so happy? Then I found out that he was a believer of Jesus. So one early morning in the late autumn, I followed him to the Hammam church. My first experience with the church was that the pastor spoke too fast, and I had no idea what he was saying. My co-worker would say, his sermon was so good. <laughs> but for me, the sermon was so hard. <laughs> I thought I could just believe in Jesus if I wanted to. But when I read the Bible, it was hard to believe what it said, and I was getting tired of going to church. Church members later told me that it was written all over my face that I felt really tempted. <laughs> I later found out that because of that, they had prayed for me back then. Then one day during service, I thought sincerely about the book of John. I especially thought about whether the resurrection had really happened through the passage about how the disciples had believed the words in the Bible only after Jesus had risen from the dead. Then I remembered something from my childhood. When I was young, I was visiting my uncle in Seoul, and I remembered looking up at the city sky in the playground at dusk. What was so striking about that scene was that there were so many lit-up crosses in that night sky. I tried counting the crosses, and I lost count. When I thought about it, if Jesus hadn't risen from the dead, it was impossible for there to be even one cross upon which Jesus had died 2,000 years later on the other side of the globe. I confirmed that Jesus' resurrection was a historical fact and was able to say amen to the words in the Bible. The resurrection became real to me, so the word became real to me too. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. Through these words, a prophet called Isaiah had prophesied about Jesus 700 years before he had come to this earth. Therefore, I realized that, as it was prophesied, Jesus had taken care of all of my problems by dying on the cross, then had risen from the dead. Jesus had said, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me, and I came to stand before him. My heart was overwhelmed with remorse, and I couldn't stop weeping. because I saw what I had been doing to Jesus while he had been standing outside the door of my heart knocking. Though he had given me a definite proof of the resurrection, I had been my own master, and I had persecuted, ridiculed, and finally crucified Jesus. I felt terribly sorry towards my Lord who had patiently waited for me and didn't stop knocking at my door. I repented the sin of not believing in Jesus, and I accepted Jesus as my Lord in my heart. Amen. After that, I could see Jesus standing outside the doors of other people's hearts, and my heart was lit aflame with love for these souls. Then I became someone who shares the gospel. 
I even shared the gospel to people I met on the street. As I shared the gospel with students on their way to school, I often ended up going out of my way as I walked and talked with the student all the way to his school. I shared the gospel in the rain, and I even got slapped on the face once as I shared the gospel. There was a dry cleaning business on the street I often walked. Its owner was a devout Buddhist. When I said, Hello, he happily greeted me back because he thought I was someone he knew. <laughs> I started sharing the gospel right away. Sir, Jesus rose from the dead. When you believe in Jesus, it's so wonderful. <laughs> but he couldn't accept the gospel and hated hearing it. I once even bought him some fruit, but one day he slapped me in the face, threw water at me and said, don't ever come back. A tear escaped my eye, not because I got hit, but because my heart ached so much for his soul. As I continue evangelizing on the streets, I got another job. It was as a taxi driver, something I thought I'd never do again. I still can't forget the first day I drove out with my cab. All this time, I had been trying to find people on the streets to evangelize to. It had been hard to start conversations with strangers, and sometimes I even got hit in the face, like I had at the dry cleaners. But now, things were completely different. As I drove my cab around town, people were asking me to come to them. <laughs> in the past, I had thought cab driving was a hard job because my circumstances were bad. But I realized that the real reason it had been hard was because I had been my own master. My circumstances and environment was the same as before. All that had changed was the lordship of my heart. But since Jesus was now my Lord, money or circumstances didn't move me. I was satisfied with Jesus alone. If I had no fear, I was fine. My heart wasn't shaken at all. There were even times that I let customers ride for free so I can give them the gospel. As I kept driving and giving the gospel in this way, I was soon thinking, Wow! I had no idea what a great job cab driving is. I didn't even envy the president. At the time, our small church was always first in the number of people we were evangelizing to, because all of my cab fare had to listen to the gospel from me. Whether I had a hundred fares or two hundred fares, they all had to hear the gospel. Whether they were young, old, drunk, sober, it didn't matter. To me, each person was not just a fair. They were all souls that God had sent me. I would give my customers a piece of peppermint candy and then share the gospel. When a customer got on, I would greet them kindly, then give them a peppermint. They really liked that. I always had a Bible verse and an excerpt of the encyclopedia posted in my cab so that my customers could read them. The excerpt said that Jesus' resurrection was a historical fact, and I told my customers that because we can't see God, he came to this earth as a human being. Then he rose from the dead as written in the Bible. Hence, it was confirmed that Jesus was God. I usually went to places where there would be customers. But one time, I went to a secluded place where there were almost no people. There... I picked up a fare who must have been drinking since daytime because the whole cab smelled like alcohol as soon as he got in. He didn't have a destination. So I drove him around Soyang Dam as I told him the gospel. Then he said I was like an angel and that he loved the fact that he had gotten to know me. He asked me for my contact information. Then he kept in touch with me. His life had been ruined due to alcoholism. He followed me to church a few times, read the Bible, and even began to work again. One day, he said he was moving because of a new job. I wanted to keep guiding him spiritually, but there was nothing more I could do for him. I ended up fasting for 40 days in the morning for him. 
I'm not the kind of person who would do a 40-day fast for anyone, but the gospel made me do it. And one time, there was a guest whose destination would take less than a minute to reach. He told me that he had still gotten a cab because his leg hurt so much. I offered to pray for him during a red light, and he liked that very much. After praying, I told him that Jesus had died for our sins as written in the scriptures, and that Jesus was whipped so that he would carry our diseases as it was promised to us in the Bible. Then I said to him, Sir, sin is not believing in Jesus. Then he repented on the spot and accepted Jesus as his Lord. Then he got out. It had happened in such a short amount of time. The power of the gospel was truly great. It really didn't have to take a long time. Amen. After I evangelized passionately, sometimes I found out that my fare was a pastor. <laughs> One pastor even tried to give me extra cash in appreciation. <laughs> After I gave one fair the gospel, he asked me what church I went to. I later found out this customer was a pastor, and he was so deeply moved by that, he told his sister-in-law that she'd be saved if she went to Hamam Church. She went so far as to move to Chinchan, then she met the risen Jesus and all of her dilemmas about faith were solved. Then she also became someone who shares the gospel. I now operate a 25-passenger minibus for our after-school academy, and I give the gospel to the kids who ride my bus. On the bus, I keep a flyer that shows people who have been changed by the gospel and a bookmark that says, Jesus has really risen. I share the gospel whenever I have the chance. These days, it's become a lot easier to share the gospel because there are many church members who have given their testimonies on a TV program. One day, I got the idea of showing the videos of this program in my bus. So with the help of one church member, I set up audio video equipment on the bus, and now my minibus has become the gospel bus. I will continue to share the gospel. As the Apostle Paul said, we loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. In the same way, I pray to give my life for the kids I drive as I share the gospel with them. I end my testimony by giving back all the glory to Jesus who came to a driver who didn't have any hopes or dreams. He not only gave me hopes and dreams, he let me spread this beautiful news as well. Thank you.